Kendo Podcast episode 179. In this episode, I want to talk about what I learned from Kodansha Keiko Kai. Kendo Podcast by Hiro Mafuji from kendogai.com. Thank you for listening. This podcast is about Japanese martial arts kendo for kendo lovers and supported by kendo enthusiasts through patreon.com. Thank you for your support, guys. Please visit kendogai.com for more kendo information and how to support kendogai.com. Welcome to Kendo Podcast episode 179. Okay,、uh, in this episode, like I said, I want to talk about what I learned from Kodansha Keiko Kai. Well, Keiko Kai is just a gathering,、uh, you know, training gathering,、uh, but it's for Kodansha.、Uh, that's for、uh, six dan. Kodansha is six dan and up. But uh, you know, uh, those who are going for fifth dan, six dan, seventh dan exam, I think. Uh, Kato Sensei, eighth dan、uh, in US, he kindly、uh, you know, uh, took a charge in charge of the, uh, uh, this Keiko Kai and Cleveland Kendo、uh, Club and also、uh, the federation they belong to.、Uh, kindly invited. Me and others for this seminar, and I really appreciate that. And really, really beneficial.、Uh, Cleveland is about、uh, on Google Map, it's about four hours and 30 minutes away around from my place. But you know, actually, it takes about five hours if you, you know, of course, you have to take a rest a little bit, right? So, and then. <laughs> I didn't drive. Uh, my uh, other sensei w-、uh, went with me and then she drove all the way to and all the way back.、Uh, thank you very much, sensei. I don't think she's listening to this, but、uh, yeah, so it's 10 hours drive, right? In,、uh, in return. And Keiko Kai, the training session, was only two hours. Was it worth it? It did. Uh, it was. It was completely uh, worth uh, taking 10 hours in return. So, what I learned this is particularly for Shinsa. Shinsa is exam. And for,、uh, you know, I think、uh, Kato Sensei is probably speaking for everyone, but particularly, you know, higher grade holders. So, for me, that was very beneficial. Probably he's kind of、uh, talking about how he did, and he, of course, he, he hears things from other e i g h t h and senses. So, I'm sure he was sharing those with us. Now, as, again, this is for Shinsa, and it is very important for us to. Make sure you behave correctly before, even before they are watching you. They are watching, you know, you know、uh, use Shinai as your、uh, stretching tool. It's not a very good idea to do that. You know, Shinai, grab your Shinai, the Kensaki, and then go around. Everyone does that, right? I understand everyone does that. But、uh, before Shinsa, You know, is it appropriate or not? Maybe not. And, you know,、uh, like they are watching you even before your Shinsa and after Shinsa as well. After you bow out, you bow out, right? But you bow out your Shinsa. Shinsa is test or exam. So I'm just, you know, I'm going to use the Japanese term. So you're going to be familiar with the term. Shinsa. After your Shinsa, all right, you bow out and walk away, right? They are still watching you. Especially,、uh, what are we going to do about this? You know, what I'm going to do about,、uh, about him or her.、Uh, and then, if, you're, you know, you, if your behavior is really good after your Shinsa, they might pass you, you know? So, 
Kendo sensei is consider everything before, during, after. It's like your kendo, isn't it? Zanshin. Zanshin includes all the behavior after your, uh, you know, kendo is done. So, which is, which makes sense, you know. Uh, so, please do, uh, you know, like sometimes you bow out and you start, uh, you know, twisting your head, you know, just go, oh man, that wasn't so good, you know, and you walk with your, you know, showing your emotion, basically. Uh, that's not what you're supposed to do. Uh, your shinsa is done and you have to be, you know, even even you have some regrets in your shinsa, you just walk away with pride, you know, you have to pride with a pride and, uh, you know, just like Hei Joshin, you know, well, I did my best, so just, you know, only God knows the result, right? So that, that, that kind of attitude, so... Uh, please, uh, you know, don't show your emotions, especially uh, if you are going for a high grade, a higher grade like sixth round, seventh round. So that was one thing. Of course, uh, how you look as well. Uh, your main himo is good, or your uh, what do you call it, tenugui is properly wrapped around your uh, head. And nothing comes out of your man. Uh, what of the length of the himo, uh, you know, everything. You got to check everything. So you have to look good. They are not there to fail you, but they they want you, they want the best of you. And that's the same for us, right? We want to show the best of us. So we have to pay attention. This is another thing Kato Sensei was telling us that, you know, the Olympians, let's say sprinting, you know, they, you know, they run like 100 meter or something. Their winning losing line is 0 0.01 second, right? Uh, so they are fighting for that, for this difference, 0 0.01, to make that difference. And they, they check their forms. Uh, they train every day for just for that to to uh, to uh, shorten their time right by zero point maybe zero point zero zero one seconds. So for us too to pass pass or fail is very thin line unless unless you do really bad. Uh, you know it's a very thin line, and if you barely pass. You are pass. So the, what's the range of pass and fail? I don't know, you know, but uh, another thing uh, we, we have to know is the judges are human beings. Us, same, human beings. So if you look at you, you know, I know we all say, we all say don't judge people from their appearance. But if you... We all, we all do, you know, we're kendo people, right? And if you look messy, you're not going to pass. You're giving bad impression, right? And uh, if your kamae is not good, uh, of course, it's shiai too, right? Shiai, shi, not only shins are shiai, uh, referees are human. So they have emotions as well. Of course, we argue it doesn't matter if it's a ippon is ippon. I understand the argument as well. But impression always there, you know. And without them, judges, knowing or influence, they know they don't know uh, they are being influenced by your appearance, they'll do the judges, right? They'll do the referee. So it's very important. If you have small ki, and you go, oh, probably he or she is not going to be a good job. This is not going to do a good job because such a small ki, because that's the expectation of from them. They want you to be loud because that's what kendo is. So if you don't fulfill the the requirements, 
uh, of course they'll th they'll judge you regarding uh, uh, respect uh, accordingly right so make sure everything is perfect the best of you not uh, uh but maybe it should be okay it's not like that all right so again this is for kodansha kodansha is sixth dan seventh dan uh by definition but of course fourth and fifth dan uh probably you have to start doing this properly okay and now positioning this is actual uh what do you call it actual tips for your grading yeah? uh, now position yourself properly now you know you have judges on one side, right? Maybe on your right, on your left. It uh, depends on which uh, which way you're coming now. But uh, judges are uh, watching you from the sideways, okay? Now, positioning is very important. So you want to show the best of you. So now, how do you think they can watch your kamae better? So you you have to you should be turning yourself to your judges, right? So they can see you better, right? Can you understand this trick? You know? So if your judges are on your right side, you should be turning or you should be moving towards them. So that means you're turning to your right. So your left side of the body is coming forward. So you can face to your judges. So judges can see your kamae better. Now, do you have to do it from the beginning? Yes. Because you want to give a good impression. Now, again, assuming your kamae is good, right? If your kamae is bad, you don't want to do it. But you know, you're supposed to have a good kamae. So you want to show how good your kamae is. So you got to turn towards your uh, judges. Now, that that is a good idea, right? Okay, so. Uh, and what you strike depends on where, you know, where you are. So if you, your judges are on your right side, okay? This is a very good example. Now, I'm talking about Shinza, but it's the same as, uh, what do you call it, uh, Shiai too. Okay, Shinza, your judges, every one of your judge judges are on, let's say, uh, one side, right? So I'm saying uh, judges, my judges, let's say, on my right side. Now, I strike Kote, okay? I strike Kote. Uh, of my opponent, which is my left. Now, judges are on my right. So even if I get the kote properly, and if you're if they're striking your man, which one look better? My kote or their man? Because they can see you. They can see my kote strike because they are on my right. Okay, I'm striking kote which is uh, far away from them and hard for them to see but your opponent's men is easy for them to see so which one looks better your kote or their men right so now you shouldn't be striking kote then i mean i'm not saying never ever do that of course, the when the timing's right, if you do it perfectly, of course, it looks still good. But if it's like, you know, which one was it? And then, maybe, the man looks better. Right? Because they cannot see your cottage strike. So, you got to think like that too. And this is same for Shia. If, you, if you, the referees cannot see, when to, you know the, your strikes they can't give you anything right again they are moving around so they can see every single your move you know every single your movement but still they are human they're not robots right they're not they can't move around precisely so that's what you have to think about
right? Positioning yourself where you should be when you execute certain strikes. So main strike as well. This one, okay. Usually your main strike is uh, your shina is on your right hand side. Your your opponent's shina is your left side, left hand side, right? And again, your let's say your judges are on your right, and you are striking men of your opponent, and your shina should be on your right, which is on the judges side so they can see your men better right of course if it's too obvious you know if you strike men at the same time which one looks better which one they can see better your men so you gotta really think about it and of course men kaishido men suriya kote suriyage men as well kote uh, if you uh, this leads to the other uh, other uh, uh, what do you call it other topic, kote suriyage men for example. Now kote, uh, you're on the right side. So let's judges are on my right. So uh, my they are striking my right kote. Right, my opponent will strike my right kote. If I do suriyage, if I do do it right, you know they can see. But uh, if I miss, right, it's easily they can see I, you know, I missed and strike men. And my men strike uh, can't look right. And the other side, if I do the other, uh, if my judges are on my left and I do kote suriyage men, well, they can't see my kote suriyage men. And if it's really, uh, you know, which one was it? Is it kote or did it did he get kote man? Uh, kote suriyage correctly? They can't tell. So it's really make sure you, if you want to do certain things, uh, they have to see what you are doing. And oh, that was a good timing, but your kote suriyage man was pretty good, but uh, it was a little bit off the timing. So. They can see that if you do it uh, when your judges are on your right. Yeah. So, you know, that is very, that was like, wow, wow moment. Oh, that's true. If I do it, there should be a scene there and I shouldn't be doing something that makes me look bad. Uh, you know, depends on the angle. I should be thinking about it, right? So... Uh, that's another, you know, the one thing I was going, wow, you know, I never thought about it. I always think about, I always tell, told my students, you know, don't show your butt to the judges. They can't see anything. But I didn't really think about what techniques I should be executing depends on the angles. So, you know, that was like aha moment. And also... Yeah, kote, like kote suriyage men. I really, I th I consider myself that you know, uh, in my like, I'm pretty good at kote suriyage men. But a uh, recent trend, kote became really fast and small, and I also understand that kote suriyage men is quite risky, and that's why you see kote uh, kaeshi men recently, you know. Uh, from the uh, sankaku, uh, sankasho, midokoro kakushi, which is three point uh, block, uh, they receive strikes with the shinai and then they execute kaishi waza. Uh, that is very uh, popular now because of, you know, uh, because of fast, speedy strikes in modern kendo. Uh, so kote suriyage is really risky because of that. Now uh, kote kaishime, yes, I I use it now, uh, but more kote kaish the the weakness or the disadvantage of that you might miss men. Okay, maybe men kote kaishime. A uh, kaishi you can really uh, block kote strike, but when you do kaishime. Uh, your target is moving, of course, so uh, quite 
likely you'll miss your target. Now the uh, you have to you have to minimize the risk. So Tato Sensei uh, recommended kote uchi otoshimen. Now this is very effective because you know it definitely you can get kote. Uh, you can really. I mean, there's an, the, it minimizes the risk of your, uh, you know, mo, dachi, what's that? Uh, judges, you know, you know, if you're striking, uh, you're executing kote suriyage men, you know, you might get hit on kot, uh, kobushi in the fist, right? Because of the reason I told you about, uh, you know, fast strike kote. But kote uchiyotoshi, at least you can get ai gotemen, okay? So, you know, it still becomes pretty good uh, ojiwaza. So, kote uchiotoshi is minimize the risk of getting hit and probably, okay, probably it, it's, you know, it, it minimize, it's not probably, it's definitely minimize the risk of missing men. All right, the kote suriyage, if you're really, you know, if you're really good at it, just go for it. But kote suriyage, the risk is when you go up and strike men, you know, you might use your right hand too much and then your the hasuji might be wrong. Okay, so that is one risk as well. Kote kaishimen as well, that's the same risk. You might miss it, miss men strike because of that. But kote uchi otoshi men is you can keep your shinai right in front of you, and then when the timing's right, you go, pang, pang. you know, you can strike men beautifully because it's not going up. You, you can keep your hands right in front of you. That was also aha moment. Now, to do so, uh, this is very important how to use your shinogi. I'm going to talk about it in the next podcast because I just realized I'm talking more than 20 minutes. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next podcast and I'm going to talk about how to use your shinai, especially shinogi, to take the center and take advantage of it. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next podcast. I would like to send special thanks to patrons for their constant support through patreons.com slash kindle for life.